The EverQuest expansions are like my children. I love every single one of them. But I bet I could come up with a list of the worst. And so I did. So what's the worst expansion in EverQuest? And perhaps the most controversial player race, the Froglocks. You either love them or you hate them. On this episode of the EverQuest Show. Welcome to episode 10 of the EverQuest Show. I'm getting settled into cranking out more and more episodes, but I need your help. If you could, make sure you click like, click subscribe, comment on this episode, and let me know what you want to see more of in the next EverQuest Show. In the meantime, let's start with news. Some sad news in the EverQuest community, as one of the original developers of the game, Mike Hutchins, has died. Hutch, as he was known, was an assistant producer and world builder for some of the original game, including zones like Nariac, Paniel, and Solasek A and B. His death comes just months after the death of another original EQ developer, Brad McQuaid, who died in November of 2019. Mike Hutchins was 51. Server merges are set for May 20th, 2020. The Lockjaw server is going to be merged into Ragefire, Trakanon and Fippy will merge with Vox, and the Brecht server will merge into the Furiona V server. And we're just weeks away from the launch of the Rizlona and Aerodune servers on May 27th, 2020. One of my favorite playable races in all of Norath are the Guctons. It's the Froglock race that was introduced in Legacy of Akisha. When I had the chance to sit down with Tom Toby, the creator of those frog models, I asked him, so why frogs? We finished Planes of Power, and that was like in December, and someone said, we need an expansion, quick. They wanted it out by February, and, and they said they also, they want a new player race. And we're like, what? So we're looking around, what can we do? Someone said, how about these frogs? So that's where we went with it. The frog lock was so much fun. Let's take this different in a different direction than the frogs that are in there. Because the frogs that are in there are terrible. Yeah. They're just like, <laughs> they're the worst looking things. So we were on the assumption our new frogs were going to replace the old frogs. Because oh. we just hated them. No, they're still there. Someone, you can't take a character out of EverQuest yeah. because some player is going to be like, that's my favorite character. Yeah. So they're still in there. But um, I think I started saying, I'm in love with a big blue frog. <laughs> So there's a blue frog in there because of that song. I had no time to animate a male character and a female character. So they share the animations, yeah. It's, they're, they, they're a little bit svelter, the female versions of them, yeah. <laughs> Last episode, we counted down the best expansions in all of EverQuest, and some of you agreed, some of you did not, and you let me know, it, and that's great. I want to hear more from you. Well, here's more for you to disagree with. I literally love every expansion in EverQuest. Seriously, I'm a fanboy, but I think we can agree there were some more well-received than others. So I'm counting down the top five not best, okay, they're the worst expansions in all of EverQuest. Same disclaimer as last episode, limited exposure to the most recent expansions, so that may skew some of the results. Number five, Legacy of Akesha. It is actually a pretty great expansion. It introduced those previously mentioned frog locks and added a few minor features and the charm slot, not to mention some great dungeons. Crypt of Nadox, Hate's Fury, Gulf of Gunthak, Dulac Harbor, some great leveling zones. But the main downfall of this expansion was that it wasn't an expansion. It was really marketed as a kind of adventure pack, a micro expansion. It was the first digital download at a time when download speeds were still a pretty big concern. And originally it was offered at a lower price point because of that. Now I stand by the fact that the content is great, but the limited amount of content puts it in the number five spot. It's not a bad expansion, it's just not much of an expansion especially immediately following Planes of Power, which made the top 10 list in our last episode. And if you haven't checked out our last episode, go check out the top 10 expansions in EverQuest. 
Number four, the Buried Sea. The idea of an ocean-based expansion with various islands being the zone seems pretty good. And some of the content is good, but there are definitely some disconnects, specifically the happenings above the ocean and below the ocean. Now, I enjoy Catacastrum lore, but it seems completely disjointed from the rest of the expansion, and good luck finding your way around those portals. Now, Jonas Dagmeyer's skeletal hands set a standard for future similar quest structures, but remember the marketing of ship-to-ship -ship combat? Well, it was either misrepresented in the advertising or misunderstood by the player. Number three, The Reign of Fear. Another example of an expansion where the content wasn't terrible, but the execution left something to be desired by much of the player base. Especially when the expansion was rolled out in three smaller pieces after paying for the full expansion up front. The Reign of Fear main expansion launched in September of 2012 with the second extension, The Shadow of Fear, coming nearly seven full months later, and the third extension, The Heart of Fear, came nearly three months after that. Still plenty of decent content and lore to be had, but it makes number three on our list mainly because the player base seemed disgruntled by the rollout. Number two, Prophecy of Roe. There are some amazing aspects of the Prophecy of Roe expansion. The Elder Forest, we can go back in time and see the original home of the elves, but there are also some things that feel very non-EverQuest. And the expansion was difficult on the casual player. You expect that from a non-level cap increased expansion, but this one seemed especially polarizing. Some spells were fairly difficult to obtain, and some of the new ideas like player-based traps and destructible objects really never found their footing. Though admittedly, they do get creatively used after this expansion. As with all the expansions on the list, I actually do like it, but it falls near the bottom. In this case, the second worst. Which brings us to the worst expansion in EverQuest. I'm following up on that because I'm doing an episode where I'm going to count down my thoughts for what the top five worst expansions are. Oh my All god. All of them are like your babies, I know. You can't no. pick just one. No. Uh, I... <laughs> give so give I me your worst. That, that one. No, it was Gates. Okay. It was completely unplayable. Like I remember I was, you know, testing my zone and I'm running along and there's a tiny little like pebble in the geometry and I got stuck in the geometry and I couldn't move. <laughs> and there were people who they would open a door and get flung like t into the skybox <laughs> and die. And d there was all this stuff and it was and we were supposed to launch I think 2 weeks after that we're like we can't do this like this is not play it was the worst there's a whole bunch of reasons gates of discord is like a real sore point for all of us. Like it's Number 1 Gates of Discord Gates of Discord was released in February of 2004 with one of the worst launches in EQ history. In addition to most of the zones and creatures tuned well above the level 65 cap, there were bugs and a lot of the content was locked behind progression, making it nearly impossible for the casual gamer. And timing is everything, and well, timing alone would have likely doomed this expansion. And while it was retuned and the level cap increase in Omens of War helped, by that point, the glory days of EQ being the top MMO were over. In November of 2004, just a few months later, the long-awaited sequel to EverQuest was launched. And just two weeks after that, World of Warcraft went live. Combine that with an expansion that felt very strange and different from Norath, and you're left with the worst expansion in EverQuest. I think EQ right around them went in a strange direction. I thought the characters felt mean-spirited. What direction are we going in? And... It went that way, and I think we pulled it back. Now, don't get me wrong, I actually love this expansion, and I'm excited to lead my guild through this expansion on Mangler, but it's hard to deny the negative impact that Gates of Discord had on EverQuest during an already trying time. All right, so do you agree with my list, or was there an expansion that I left out? Comment below and let me know what your least favorite expansions were, and also make sure you click subscribe so you can troll me the next time I post an episode. One of the most notable things about the Gates of Discord expansion were the zone names, but how do you actually pronounce them? Also, I was responsible for the naming conventions. Like, I thought I was super intellectual. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, we're gonna do hard consonants and stuff. And, you know, I, I did. So that was your idea. <laughs>
<laughs> I very rarely take credit for it, but yes. <laughs> I, I actually like the that. names. I like that it was a full convention. Right, and the Telosians were sort of more, you know, um, more soft consonants and vowels and stuff. And, I, you know, I had this, I had documentation that said, like, here's the suggestions. And you give that to some smart ass designer who's like, I'm going to put 900 consonants in a row then, <laughs> and then does it. And you saw the outcome. Yixta? Yixta. 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 That one I don't know. I literally had to think, I, I thought I had it upside, upside down, down first. Oh, I would, I. Yixta. Ooh, Kivik? Quivik. I said Kivik. Quivik? Kivik. 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 Gotta put extra letters in there. <laughs> Let's just add some more vowels. Vexed. 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 I had a really hard time pronouncing a lot of things in Gates of Discord. <laughs> when we developed these at the time, I'm like, yeah, I could totally pronounce that. <laughs> You're gonna really bring them out. <laughs> Ooh, Tevexu. Texvu. I say Texvu as well. Hmm, that's a weird one. Texavu. Texavu. Texuvu. This is like an eye test. <laughs> Xvu. <laughs> T-X-E-V-U. <laughs> Zvu. Oh, the T is silent. Yeah, because, I mean, can anyone say that, really? Zevu. 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 She, she drinks a lot. <laughs> and I'll have lots of exciting things coming for the next episodes of the EverQuest show, including some episodes focusing on music, on art, and lots more. Make sure you click subscribe so you'll know when those episodes are posted. And in the meantime, check out everquestshow.com. Thanks for watching.